So after years of filming in my very small home office and random areas in my home, I decided to create a dedicated YouTube studio in my garage. Our garage setup is a tandem garage, which technically fits three vehicles, but we've been using the third space as a makeshift gym at home. So the first thing we did was clear everything out, replace the chipped and very yellow epoxy floor, and paint the walls a dark color. I didn't want to replace the existing cabinets, so I decided on this black color that really made them stand out. And to tie things together, I wanted to add wood accents along the wall for a modern yet warm feeling. I wanted the space to be a dedicated area for me to film, so it needed to be efficient without losing any character. So I kind of made up this theme and it's called Modern Sustainability, which will make more sense in the future. But anyway, welcome to my YouTube garage studio. Unlike my home office, this time the focal point of the space is not the desk, but rather this efficient gear corner. This corner is meant to hold and organize all of my most used items and serve as a charging station for my devices. I place my most used lenses here for easy access and a little security camera which I'll be talking about later in this video. And this cool looking thing here is actually just a little bug catcher in case I have the door open to the backyard. I mounted this black pegboard from IKEA to hold <clears throat> some of my headphones and some various lighting equipment that I use. And one of those most used items is this switch pod with a magnetic mount from Moment. This is perfect for filming using my phone or when I'm using it as a webcam. Above the pegboard is this beautiful wooden light fixture that has a touch operated and dimmable light. Alongside this are some fake plants that add warmth to this rather cold space and highlights this little corner pretty well. I bought this industrial style storage shelf from Amazon and it's surprisingly easy to build. It's purposeful and looks great in this garage. Stored in the shelves are these oversized storage bins where I place some various items and products that I need to unbox or review. It definitely beats having all of them laid out on the floor or on top of my desk. One of my goals when I was designing my studio space is that I wanted it to look like it's still part of a garage and not just some weird additional space. So I decided to park my e-bike right behind me as a backdrop and hung some automotive posters on the wall. These wooden slats break up the dark wall and ties everything together really nicely. These slats are very easy to install as they come in small manageable sizes. They are high quality, lightweight products and they're made by a company called Wood Veneer Hub. I highly recommend it. I installed a few more panels along the garage wall to carry the theme all throughout. The opposite wall is a large mirror with a custom wooden frame that matches the wood finish of the rest of the garage. Aside from making the space feel a lot bigger, having this large mirror right in front of me makes it easier for me to check on the lighting of my videos. Okay, so there's a few things to talk about with my setup, so I'm going to break it down starting with this gear tree by Ulanzi. The gear tree is a fully customizable rig that holds my light, my camera, my monitor, and a microphone. I simply roll this into place in front of the mirror and right behind the desk. This makes it very convenient if I need to move things around without having to pick up every single piece and reassemble them in a different location. The desk that I'm using is an old desk by Fully and it's an electronic sit-stand desk with casters installed, making it easy to move around or reposition. On the desk, I have one of my LG Dual Up monitors and this small Grove-made desk shelf for simple organization and to raise my MacBook Pro. To my left is the Rodecaster Pro 2, which I use to record voiceovers and podcasts. This second generation Rodecaster is much sleeker looking than my first gen and offers a lot more features while also taking up a smaller space. I use two microphones in this setup. The first one is the M70 Pro X from Bayer Dynamic for when I'm recording voiceovers or podcasts. I've been using the Rode Pod mic for the last two years, but I recently had the chance to try this microphone out. And aside from it looking better, at least in my opinion, 
I find that I also prefer the sound over the pod mic. However, I have to say that it also costs twice as much as the pod mic. So I think the best entry level and all arounder still goes to Rode. Speaking of Rode, the other microphone is the Rode NTG5 with the pistol grip mounted on a boom arm attached to the gear tree. This allows me to easily position it above my head and out of the shot if I'm recording videos. Attached to the NTG5 is my Zoom H5 audio recorder. This then connects to my camera for better audio quality. Now you might be wondering if I've done any sound treatment in my garage and to be honest, I haven't. Mainly because I currently do not find the need to do so since the latest update of Final Cut has a built-in feature called voice isolation and it really does an amazing job reducing the echo in my audio recordings. For my headphones, I'm currently enjoying these DT990 Pros by Bayer Dynamic. They are open back headphones that are super comfortable and sounds really good for just about anything. As mentioned earlier, I have one of my LG Dual Up monitors on the desk, which I really like. It allows for maximum productivity, even when I'm just using one monitor, and the included ergonomic arm allows me to easily move it away from the shot or adjust the angle. The other monitor is an old 27-inch LG 4K monitor that I have mounted on the gear tree. And aside from it providing extra screen real estate, it also acts as a monitor for when I'm filming top-down shots of items on my desk. The monitors are connected to this dock by Kensington that is neatly stored underneath the desk shelf. This dock is called the SD5780T and it lets me connect a single Thunderbolt cable from the dock to my MacBook Pro, which frees up a few other ports for me to use. For peripherals, I'm using the Logitech MX Mechanical Keyboard and the MX Master 3S for Macs, and they sit on a wool felt desk pad by Grovemate. I made a separate video on the Logi for Mac products, which I will link at the top of this video in case you want to watch it. When I'm filming my talking head segments, I mount my camera on the gear tree and install a dummy battery that's plugged directly into a power outlet. I can then position the camera and the monitor so that when I'm in a meeting, I'm looking directly or at least almost directly at the person and not at a weird angle. This mounting system also allows me to film top views of items on the desk and use the LG screen as my camera monitor. I'm using a Godox SL60W as my key light with a 33 and a half inch small rig softbox as my modifier. This softbox is one of my favorite purchases as it is well made and allows for nice soft lighting. And those are the main items in this garage studio space, but I'd like to show a few other accessories that I use here. Although I'm almost always using headphones when I'm in here, I have this nice Bluetooth speaker by Positive Grid called the Spark Mini. This is actually a guitar amp and a Bluetooth speaker, but I think it sounds really nice and it looks great here in the garage. I also have my Grovemade MagSafe charger for my iPhone and an Apple Watch charger. Oh, and I'm also doing a video on these really cool cameras, but that's coming soon to the channel. So here's a reminder to subscribe and click on the notification icon so you won't miss it once it goes live. Anyway, most of the rest of the garage, I keep empty for parking, obviously, and in case I need to film something a bit bigger in the future. Now, obviously, having a lot of these things here means I need to make sure that they are safe and secure. While we have an alarm system installed and that I'm home 99% of the time, having cameras adds another layer of security and peace of mind. Fortunately, Akara was kind enough to send me a couple of their products to use, and this little guy here is the Hub G3 camera. It's a 2K resolution indoor security camera that you can pan and tilt, which gives you a 360 degree viewing angle. I can control the camera using my phone and can even set it to sound or notify me if it detects any movement in the middle of the night. The other camera they sent is the G2H Pro, which I attached magnetically here to give a wider and different angle of the studio. What I love about these cameras is that they work with Apple HomeKit. So when I'm not in the studio, I can view a live feed of the cameras through my Apple Watch Ultra. And the last item they sent me is this temperature and humidity sensor that I installed underneath the desk. I lock up most of the expensive gear inside the house, but in case there was a sudden change in temperature while I'm away, like a fire or something, this little device will be able to notify me right away. 
Now, there's so much to learn about HomeKit and automation using these products, but I don't think I am the best person to show you that. So if you want to have a deeper understanding on what you can do or how it works, check out Shane Watley's channel here on YouTube. And I'll leave a link in the description because I've learned so much from his videos. I hope you enjoyed this tour. Although it looks like it's done, I still have a few things I need to get to before I can say that it's at 100%. Let me know what part of the tour is your favorite in the comment section below. And if you have any specific questions, feel free to send them to and I will address them in a future video. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys again soon.